Welcome to our Pilgrim Bible study this morning. It's great to have you with us. Um, I'm just going to say a prayer at this time. So please just let us uh, bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, please help us to draw away from sin and to live in your holiness, which pleases you. Amen. So this morning we will be looking at how important it is uh, to live a life of holiness and purity before the Lord Jesus Christ. And even though Christ isn't present in body, he is present in spirit. So this morning, this morning's study tells us that God himself is holy, pure and righteous. And he is calling us to be just like himself. God is calling us to holiness and purity because he, he himself is holy and pure. So the scriptures we are looking at this morning um, is impressing upon us how important it is that we take holiness and uprightness um, in our lives seriously and that God takes holiness in the lives of his people very seriously. Yes, I'll say that again. God takes holiness very seriously in the lives of his people. And again, the topic is holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Um, and it's taken from 1 Peter 4, verses 1 to 6. Our supporting scripture is Galatians 5, verse 19 to 23. So we're just going to go into our first, the first verse of our Bible study. And it tells us that Christ is a perfect example as regards the right attitude against evil and sinful behaviour. And this is the same attitude we are to take up. And we have to learn to resist those things that we were once very comfortable with and have got used to over our lifetime. And we have to learn to shake them off. And the Lord helps us to do this. And this can be sometimes emotionally very difficult, very difficult um, for us emotionally because it's just not what we used to. It can feel very uncomfortable to begin to start to cut out certain attitudes and things that we once used to do. So emotionally, it can be difficult when making these decisions to change our lifestyle. It really is a change of lifestyle when we come to um, start living for Christ. Um, so Christ himself actually suffered physically to the point of death, but we must also be prepared to suffer some very difficult uh, experiences when we turn to Christ. And sometimes that comes in the forms of a, a backlash, you know, when we first get converted people are very uncomfortable with it and they um they'll they'll give you a piece of their mind and what they really think about the decision you've made to turn to christ so we must be prepared for the backlash and we must form this attitude once you've had that experience hold on to it and don't let it go and don't let anybody discourage you telling you oh it's just some kind of part of your imagination of something that's just happened to you. No, God gives people real, real uh, deep and powerful experiences and we have to hold on to it. And this will carry us through our relationship with the Lord Jesus. So be prepared for the backlash when we come to a change of lifestyle as we commit to, Christ, to, commit to Jesus Christ. Now, some individuals, including family members, may find this very difficult to handle our new commitment to a walk in holiness and to walk in purity and to shake off those things that we once used to do you know people will find that very difficult and we need to be prepared for this so when you commit to christ you know don't be surprised when people you know sort of resist it and become uncomfortable with it um, and as we read in the Bible, and not just in the Bible, but even now in many countries around the world where people are um, f have found new faith in Jesus Christ, you know, friends and family members have reacted violently to it, really reacted badly to Christianity becoming a part of their lives. And they say all sorts against people and 
who have just been uh, converted to Christ and they insult them and what have you. Um, so this has been people's experiences as they've committed their hearts and lives to Christ. Um, so on verse 2 um, of First Peter 4, you know, God is calling all people to holiness. God is calling all people to purity and holiness because he himself is holy. And he wants us, God wants us to understand the benefits of holiness and purity and living upright lives. He wants us to understand the benefits of it. Number one, it keeps us out of unnecessary trouble. You know, sometimes we will have unnecessary trouble, not of our own making. Some of it may be, but some of it not. But we will avoid, you know, a lot of unnecessary nonsense, if I can put it that way, when we start to walk upright. Um, it, number two, it protects our reputation. When you start to walk in purity, you're, you're beginning to develop a good reputation, regardless of what people want to say about you. You're developing a good reputation. That's what God does for us. And number three, you, you become emotionally healthy. You become emotionally more stable and healthy. And our mental health um, improves once we start to, start to walk in holiness and take uprightness seriously as we walk in with Christ. And we become more sensitive to God's spiritual life in us as we take holiness and a pure lifestyle seriously. Um, we become more aware of spiritual dangers around us and we start to walk more carefully with Christ. So there are many more benefits that I haven't mentioned here, many more benefits for us as human beings as we start to walk in uprightness and purity in the different areas of our personal lives. And we stop chasing our own ambitions and plans and desires. And we start to turn everything over to the Lord Jesus, asking him to lead us and guide us as he sees fit. And these are the benefits of holiness. It really does affect us mentally and emotionally and deep down spiritually. And there will be an urgent desire to really and do those things that we know please, pleases the Lord. As we read his word and as the word of God instructs us, we will find ourselves urgently wanting to do more to please the Lord. Um, and verse 3 puts things in good perspective when it tells us that we will become tired. There comes a point, <clears throat> excuse me, there comes a point where we will have had enough of the things that we used to do in the past. And, you know, we will eventually want to give them up. And some of us will willingly give them up because we realize that there's got to be more to life than the way we're living right now. You know, that was my experience. And I'm sure, you know, those who were listening, you know, it will be your experience as well. There comes a point where you become tired and you've had enough of the things that you're doing and the lifestyle that you're living in. And you become just tired of it. And the truth is, Sin makes us very tired. Sin wears us out. Sin is a burden to carry. It really wears us down and can break us down. And there comes a point where we've absolutely just had enough. So the Bible describes it perfectly. Um, so and verse 4 also tells us, you know, the sad thing is as well that there are many people who continue to go on living the way they want to live in sin. They're oblivious to the fact that the way they're living really isn't that right, isn't that brilliant, isn't that good. There must be a better way of living. But people want to continue living that way. They will continue firmly in that way, even knowing it's not beneficial for them. And how sad that is. So, and they, they enjoy continuing in it without a care in the world. And, you know, the Bible also names some of these specific sins in um, that people are just comfortable with and continue to live in. It speaks about all types of immorality, not just sexual immorality, but all other types of immoral behaviour, um, immoral attitudes towards others, and different types of lust, um, lusting after all kinds of different things, lusting after them um, for no real reason. You know, sometimes people have enough but they just want more just for the sake of it 
Um, and there are all types of feasting. Now, there's nothing wrong with actual feasting, but there is a feasting that leads to immorality, uh, out of control, wild living, without a care for your reputation, so to speak. But the Bible speaks against these things. And because God is holy, he wants us to come away from these things. Now, it speaks about feasting. It speaks about drunkenness. The Bible tells us quite clearly not to get drunk. It's not good for us. It's not good for our health. But we see that is very prevalent today in our society. But the word of God warns against um, getting drunk and into a drunken stupor. And it speaks about going to wild parties. Uh, it speaks about the terrible worship of idols. Now, these words were written hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but it's, it's still the same today. It still applies to it still applies to us as human beings today. God wants better things for us. So, and again, let us not forget that many of us were a part of this lifestyle. I certainly was before I understood truth. You know, this was very much a part of my own personal life, and I'm sure it was yours as well. But the Lord is calling us to bigger and better things. The Lord is calling, calling us to cleaner and purer things. He's calling us to much healthier and a better lifestyle. And so it's good for us to understand that. Okay, so I will realise that these things also create terrible problems in and around our lives. But God demands holiness of us. He really does. He demands holiness of us, but he will help us also in the journey of holiness. His, his Holy Spirit will help us to really shake off and break some of those bondages in our hearts and minds and even in our spirits that we're dealing with that we're finding very, very hard to shake off. So as we come to Christ, his Holy Spirit will actually provide the help that we need to walk in holiness. Um, so as a study help, I'd just like to recommend um, Galatians 5, verse 19 to 23. Um, and this will help us to understand, you know, the sins that we are to draw away from and the benefits that the Holy Spirit brings in as we take those steps in committing our hearts and lives to Christ. So again, remember, that as you make the commitment, people will be very surprised at the changes you've made. And um, you, they will be surprised at the changes the Lord has made in your personal lives. Come away from the filthy language. Come away from filthy and immoral attitudes. And come away from insulting and derogatory behaviour towards others. The Bible is very clear, specific as well. The Bible is very specific about many sins and many um, behaviour and attitudes that we ought to draw away from and be conscious of them and draw away from them as we come to Christ. So the Bible says people will slander us and they will hate us and um, we are encouraged to be prepared for this so that we can stand firm and begin to grow in our faith. And But the Bible also tells us that God holds people accountable for their sins and that he also even though he does hold us accountable he's patient with us and he's kind to us and he sends us help and he sends us encouragement so it's important for us to get involved in an environment and in a church and in a group of people that takes holiness and upright living and purity really seriously there are many benefits for our personal lives and even for those around us as well. Others see the difference in us and maybe consider um, making personal changes for themselves. So um, righteous living is contagious. Can I say that? It really is. When people live in strong and they're firm and they're doing the right thing, it's a good example and a healthy example. And also good role models, very good role models as we um, begin to take on Christ and uh, walk in holiness and purity and take him seriously in our personal lives. Okay, so and again the Bible goes on to remind us that people who have lived and died generations before us heard the gospel, they made the changes in their lives and it brought them closer to God. 
Holiness draws us closer to the understanding the things of the Lord. And as a result, those people who died generations before us made it into the presence of God because of what Jesus Christ has done in presenting us to God as a holy, clean, pure and upright people. So be encouraged in holiness, be in holiness, be encouraged in purity, be encouraged in uprightness and may God bless you as you take steps to walk with him. So I'd just like to pose a few questions here and you know that's important for us to ask ourselves as we take in these steps. Will you accept in your heart that God truly is holy? Will you accept God is a holy, a pure and a righteous God? And number two, will you make time to grow in holiness? Because it does take time and we will fall to make mistakes now and again. But ultimately, you know, we grow in the way of holiness and purity. Will you make the time to grow in purity and holiness? And number three, will, will, number three sorry, will you brace yourself for sometimes the backlash and the insults that come your way because you've connected to Jesus Christ? Now may God bless you and strengthen you as you take steps towards him, as you are converted and committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. May he strengthen you, bless you and protect you. Thank you for joining us in our Pilgrim Church Bible study this morning. Thank you.